Sup guys, how we doing? Welcome back to another video. Today, we are almost, almost in the top fifth. We are almost at the top 20, but not quite. And let's not take any shine off of number 21 on the list of the top 100 NFL players of 2023. Running back for the Chargers. That's a name that comes to mind for me because of fantasy football. And it's actually the first time I've even mentioned fantasy football on this list. And it's because Austin Eckler was not only a running back uh, scoring rushing yards, but also a receiver, and 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 not just a dual threat. As far as I can remember from the footage that I've seen, and it might have been last year, you know. I mean, to think that a running back is at number twenty-one, that, that above the likes of Saquon Barkley, above the likes of Derrick Henry, his production must have been immense. And it was through the air and also along the ground, from what I remember. Don't quote me on that. I feel like he's he's shorter in stature. I feel like he's around about five foot eight, which is interesting. You know, that, that is one of the shortest players in the entire league, I'm assuming, with one of the highest productions in the entire league, which means never judge a book by its cover. Either way, the first thing we're going to do is have a look at his wiki, have a look at his stats, watch his video, and then put him in a rugby team. And, I, and I'm going to say, look, at the height of 5'8", it might be 5'10", but if it is between 5'8 and 5'10", with the production level he has, I'm going to say he might be one of our only halfbacks on this list time will tell let's get into it i'm actually really looking forward to to seeing um seeing his stats from last year so austin eckler 510 sorry mate my mistake my mistake although you know heights are sort of overestimated in the the world of nfl but um 510 91 kg running back may 17th 1995 he was born in lincoln nebraska he's 28 years of age uh, went undrafted in 2017. An undrafted free agent, not only making the top 100, but coming in at number 21. Played college football at Western State, uh, Western Colorado, Mountaineers that is, from 13 to 16. Had a fairly decent college football career. It's not just fairly decent, it's fucking mint. 40 games played, 5,857 rushing yards, 55 rushing touchdowns, 115 receptions for 1,315 receiving yards, at an average of 11.4 and 8 receiving touchdowns. That brings his career total to 63 touchdowns over 40 games. That's over 1.5 per game. Pre-draft measurables from the Western State Pro Day, 4.48 for the 40-yard dash. He's listed at 5'8 and 5'8 of an inch. That's where I get the 5'8 from. 4.48 for the 40-yard dash, 40 and a half inches on the vertical jump, 10'8 on the broad jump. He must have got picked up by the Chargers at some point after being undrafted, which, you know, with that kind of production, doesn't matter where you play. If you're not drafted, that is a kick in the fucking gut. But he didn't let it affect him. He came into the Chargers. He's been there ever since. And I'd love to see his early years. I mean, we have seen this before. Look at his progression through the years. He's been in the league for six years. First year, never started a single game. Got 260 yards. Second year, started three games. Got 554 yards. Third year, started eight games. Got 557 yards. Fourth year, started 10 games. Got 530 yards. And it seems as if he was taken out through injury. But he didn't let that slow him down. In 2021, came in, played 16 games, started 16 games, 911 rushing yards. And in 2022, played 17 games, got a career high 915 yards. But that's not where it ends, folks. We go over to receiving yards. First year, 279. Second year, 404. Third year, 993. Fourth year, 403. Fifth year, 647. And in his sixth year, 2022, got 722 receiving yards with a career high 107 receptions. So looking at those statistics from the outside, if you hadn't have told me he's a running back, especially during those first four seasons, I would have said he's a receiver lining up at running back. I would have said he's a dual threat through and through. And that's what he is. And that is what he is. And have a look at this. Career statistics through six seasons... 89 games played, 3,727 rushing yards and 34 rushing touchdowns, 3,448 receiving yards and 29 receiving touchdowns. We thought Christian McCaffrey was a dual threat. Austin Eckler, being that he is ranked above Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley, Derek Henry, Delvin Cook and the rest of them, he is the epitome of being a dual threat running back. Unbelievable. 
Okay, what do we got here? Oh, we've got some drama. We have some drama, folks. I haven't read anything previous, but in 2023, Eklis said that he felt like he was punched in the face by the charges when they refused to negotiate contract extensions. He has sacrificed six of his best years for the Los Angeles Chargers, both on the ground and through the air. He's fumbled the ball 15 times from a total 811 attempts at rushing and 389 receptions. 15 times from like almost 1,500 touches of the ball. That is 1 in 100. He is a 1 in 1 million talent. His name's Austin Eckler. And let's get into the video. Pain in the neck. <laughs> yeah. He's a guy you have to game plan for. And it's because he's the focal point of that offense. Well, he just adds a completely different element uh, to our offense. Our offense doesn't click without him. What a weapon. Do you have a favorite play from this year of yourself? Do I first time we've seen him? That's a clean shave. My favorite play. Wow. Um. Well, I'm gonna say it could have been cleaner. Choosing one favorite play can be hard. What I really want to know is whether he's five eight and five eighths of an inch, or whether he's five ten. When so many of them end in touchdowns. And off. There it is. There's the crease. Fifteen. Ten. Five. Actually. Look, guys, the last thing I want to look at, he runs a 448 40 yard dash. We're about to see it right there. 40 and a half inches vertical. As far as athleticism, he's got it in spades. But what I really want to see is his deal, his bag, so to speak. He signed his second bag, March 16th, 2020. He signed a four year, $24.5 million contract extension. So, being that that was prior to the 2020 season, he's played 2020, 2021, 2022. He's coming into his fourth year, and that's where. You know, he felt like he was indeed punched in the face when they refused to negotiate contract extensions. But maybe they're just, maybe they're just holding out. And at the end of the day, we haven't reached the start of the regular season just yet. So both sides, it seems both sides are keeping their options open. And, and that's okay. That is okay. I would say the favorite one this year is probably um, Arizona. Um, the game-winning, you know, touchdown. Just coming out, sliding to the flat. It was a one-on-one. -on -one. Justin gave me a chance. I was able to, like, Decent torque speed. my body. Enough speed. Great tackle. Great cover. He still got in. And just barely get into the end zone, but just enough. I think the intensity level of that play it wasn't, like, the most flashy play, but just, you know, that this is it, right? This is make or break. Um, game on the line. Get it done. I think it makes that elevate above the rest of the plays that we made this game year. Game benches. Eckler is one of those slashing kind of backs. You know, even though they're not the biggest of guys, they're hard to tackle because of how quick they are and their, their slashing ability. And when they see see a hole, they hit it hard. Damn, bro. Way to make your way up field. 200 pounds, would you believe? He's going to slip under a fair few tackles. They bring four. It's a handoff to Eckler. Bounces it outside. To the 15. Smith's away to the 10. Where's he going to go? He's going to get in. Chargers. How good is a guy like that? He's going to get in. 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 He's is Austin Eckler having? He is on fire right now in the zone. Yeah, no, I respect his game a lot. I think that was the guy all week. I remember playing the Chargers. That's the guy we were circling. Um, I think leading into that game, he'd already had like 10 touchdowns or something crazy. Eckler finished the year as the league's touchdown leader with 18 combined scores. Oh my God, they're going crazy out there. They're going crazy. And the Chargers don't want to negotiate for his third bag? They want to let him go? You're really going to let this guy go? Crazy like his 107 receptions in the... Well, I mean, I know he's contracted for another year at least, but it opens up the opportunity for other teams, right? Regular season. A Chargy Sorry, like his 107 receptions in the regular season. A Chargers franchise record and the second most by a running back in NFL history. You're telling me a running back holds the Chargers receptions record for a season. You know, he's not just a running back, but also he can get out and run routes. Okay, who was the running back in NFL history that got more receptions than him? Most 
receptions in a season by running back. Okay, so during 2022, Christian McCaffrey came up second with 85. Leonard Fournette was in third with 73. But you look at in history, Austin Eckler's actually tied second with McCaffrey from his 2018 season. And in first, Christian McCaffrey has made, as you guys can read, the most receptions by a running back in a season with 116 catches in 2019. Well, well, well. Have a look at that. They're, they're on the same level, let's be honest. I mean, McCaffrey's got two mentions and Eckler's got two mentions. His second in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth overall was in 2019. 2018 was Barkley with 91 in 10th overall. Darren Sproles with 86 receptions in 2011. Marshall Fork with 86 in 1998 and 87 in 1999. Reggie Bush in 2006 with 88. And the list goes on and on. The precision in his routes. He scores touchdowns on the ground. He scores touchdowns through the air and catching the ball. When you talk about being able to get five out in the pattern, Austin creates the ultimate mismatch for a linebacker. Austin Eckler is going to show this angle route like he's going to go that was inside clean. and then he's going to break it right back out. I mean, they love throwing this guy the ball. I want to see that route. route like he's going to go inside and then he's going to Oh, break. see that's like a, it's a combination between a flag route and an out route, right? And uh, the defense has absolutely no idea. Get right back out. I mean, they love throwing this guy the ball. He's elite in the screen game. When we get him going in the screen game, his ability to read those blocks and really create for our football nice team start is a always on. Jump cut. Seems like he's happy playing football. Like oh, one yeah. of those guys who's like smiling on the sideline yeah. all the time. Yeah, I mean, I'd be happy too if I was, you know, catching three, four touchdowns a game. He's having he's having a blast, and you can see it. You can hear it when he's in the huddle, when he's out there making, you know, hitting his guitar move. Uh, I have to try to tone him down a little bit. Yes, sir! Yeah! Like them! Yeah! That's who he is. He's a high-intensity guy, and I mean, we can't get enough of him. So, you know, I hope we play together for a long time. Well, only time will tell if you play together with him for... Uh, a season past the 2023 season but he is contracted through 2023 he will be on the market post season but i mean the Chargers have a player they have a player right there either way um look if austin eckler can't find a spot at the Chargers, he can always come to rugby and if he was to come to rugby and this will be the final part of the video i did make mention at the start of the video i'd put him in at halfback and after seeing that after seeing how much of a well-rounded athlete he is, I would love nothing more than to place him in at halfback. The only thing he's missing is a passing game. He would need that. That's the only reason why I wouldn't put him in at halfback. But as far as his, you know, body shape, as far as, you know, sniping around the ruck, uh, taking the ball off of the ruck, choosing whether, okay, in this instance, am I going to pass it out or am I going to take it myself? You know, if there is... A bit of a gap around the ruck, either left or right. He, he could take it himself, and he could make a fair few meters. I'm not going to lie. You know, I have mentioned that the number eight is the hybrid between the backs and the forwards. But the true link between the forwards and the backs is the halfback. They are the link. They are literally the link. They pass it. They pass it and pass it. They follow the action. Pass, pass, pass. Until there's an opportunity to run or kick. And I think with this guy being as well-rounded as he is... He'd flourish. Five foot nine. We'll call him five. Listed at five ten on Wiki. Listed at five eight and three quarters at the combine. I'm going to call him five nine and a half. And at two hundred pounds, he has the bulk to make a real go of it at halfback. Either way, those are my thoughts and my thoughts alone. Thank you for watching. And in the next one, we enter the top twenty. The videos do get a little bit longer from this point. So strap in, get your coffee, get your beverage of choice, and let's get into the top twenty. Cheers, guys, and I'll see you soon.